Hey, just want to talk about RV inspections. Why should you get an RV inspection? What is an RV inspection? Um, it's all about RV inspections. <clears throat> so an RV inspection. Um, an RV inspection is exactly that, an inspection done on an RV. Um, any type of RV, no matter what kind of RV it is, if it's a motorhome or if it's a fifth wheel, if it's a travel trailer, if it's a pop-up, if it's uh, you know a little pup or whatever you want to call them, there's a bazillion different types of RVs out there. So you should have it inspected no matter what it is. And most importantly, <clears throat> make sure you get it inspected regardless of the age. If it's 50 years old, or if it's brand spanking new, it's a brand new 2024 model, make sure you're getting that unit inspected. These new ones coming out since, oh my gosh, the, the, since 2015 to 2017, everything after 2017, I'm telling you, are nightmares coming out of the factories. Nightmares. These new ones, most 95% of everything I look at on new motorhomes, travel trailers and fifth wheels, all the you know RVs, period, most all of them have life safety issues, meaning they should not be leaving the factory the way they are. And they definitely should not be leaving the dealership, you know, the second time around, I guess I would say. So this is something you need to make sure you're getting an inspection because that inspection could save your life. And it definitely could save you a lot of money, lots of money. I'm, and I will just give you an example. Roughly, roughly speaking, around a thousand dollars for an inspection, depending at where you're at in the country. You might be able to get an inspection as low as six hundred and fifty dollars, but as high as my most expensive inspection I ever did was almost it was at eighteen hundred dollars. But the guy, there was a lot involved with that inspection. So, the typical inspection is going to take a good inspection. Let me put that. A typical good inspection, that inspector is going to be on site for eight hours inspecting that unit. If he's only there or she's only there for three hours, you're, you got the wrong, definitely got the wrong inspector. Because you, I can tell you, they're not looking at anything in three hours. So it takes a good eight hours with a good professional inspector. It's going to take them a good eight hours on site looking at that RV. So they're going to look at everything. Now, I highly recommend the NRVIA as inspectors. They have them all over the country. They are certified inspectors. Now, you know, I get, you know, people say, well, should I get an inspection? Uh, my, my buddy's an engineer. Yeah. The last person you want looking at your RV is an engineer. I mean, seriously. Sorry, engineers. Do your job. You're not an inspector. You're not, uh, being an engineer does not qualify you to be a professional RV inspector. It doesn't qualify you to be doing anything with RVs. Even if you're an RV engineer and you've engineered these things, um, I'm not going to mention any names out there from a um, very popular, um, uh, you know, unit. Um, Class B cost you a Two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. I spoke with their engineer, and he had no idea where the batteries were on this this unit, and he designed it. I talked to the guy who designed the RV, and he had no clue on where the batteries were, the house batteries. How was that even possible? Luckily, I found him. And then I called him back to let him know where they were, called the manufacturer to say, hey, by the way, this is where they're located. Um, they were happy to know that. Anyways, and they I don't even know how it's possible that you wouldn't know where the batteries are. So anyways, <clears throat> they, um, you know, you need to make sure you're getting these things inspected. Don't get them inspected by an engineer. Your friend that's an engineer, like I said, tell him to do his job and hire a certified RV inspector because that's what they're, that's what they go to school to do. All right, they're certified to do that. They have schooling to back them up, college degree there for them. So to do that, so make sure you do that. Your friend's a mechanic, that's wonderful. If you're buying a motorhome, 
Have them look at the the engine. Have them look at the transmission. Have them test drive it. You know, have them run a diagnostic check. But that does not qualify him to look at the rest of the unit because just because he's a mechanic doesn't mean he knows. And you preferably want an ASC certified mechanic. And, um, you know, so that way you know you're getting a decent inspection. So on on the motor and transmission, you know. So if your buddy is a mechanic and he just he's learning in his backyard, whoa, no, don't take his word for it. So you, you just want to make sure you're you're doing the right thing. Now during an inspection, they might ask you if you want a fluid analysis. I'm on the fence about fluid analysis, but I'm going to explain that to you. What a fluid analysis does is we on a motor home. Um, we pull the oil, do an oil sample, transmission. We can pull all the fluids up. And some RVs, there's up, I think the most fluids I ever pulled were nine fluids on one motorhome. So that was a Class A diesel pusher. So it's going to cost you. So um, what I do is I pull all the fluids, have a sample of them. I send them into a lab, and they come back, and they tell me what the, the engine looks like, transmission, all that stuff. Now, with that being said, some of you inspectors out there, are going to be a little bit upset for this one, but I'm just saying it, it, it is what it is. When I tell people about a fluid and analysis, I don't recommend all the fluids. What I do recommend is the engine oil, if there's enough mileage on that oil. If it's new oil, forget it. Don't bother. Don't waste your time. But, however, your engine oil, your transmission fluid, and your generator oil, those are the top three oils, um, fluids that I recommend doing. You can do the antifreeze, but it depends on what lab you're sending it to. One of the labs, I'm not going to mention their names. Every single antifreeze sample I've ever sent them comes back bad. They're not. They say it's bad because there was water added to it or there was more antifreeze added to it. No, nothing, no major you know, problems. It just, it's just diluted a little bit too much. So it always comes back bad. Um, and a lot of these, you know, some of these fluids, like I said, antifreeze is the number one. They always say it's bad. So I don't even, I, I try to talk people out even doing that. Just get your engine oil, get a sample of that, get your transmission done, and get your generator oil. Those are the three most crucial oil analysis ones you want to get done. If you want to do the others, by all means, do it. Um, and I do recommend uh, 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 Blackstone Laboratories. They have been the best for me. Um, and if, I don't know if the, you know, whoever you're using, they may use somebody else, but that's who I use is Blackstone. And they always give me a, they give me a good, honest, you know, feedback, especially about the antifreeze. Cause that's a major thing. So now your inspection, when you're getting the inspection, you know, you want to make sure that thing is inspected very good. You're at a dealership or you have a, um, a personal seller if the personal seller or the dealership says no we're not going to let a, a somebody come on our property and do an inspection <clears throat> my advice is walk away that's right i'm telling you right walk away if they're not going to allow an inspector on site to look at that rb walk away somebody else will be happy to have their unit inspected and checked out so my thing is what do they have to hide what are they afraid of they always, well, we have problems with inspectors. All the last three times an inspector came here, we lost the sale. Well, there's probably a reason. I have a dealership here in Tampa that every single uh, RV I've ever inspected at that dealer is a major issue. It has major problems. I've never had somebody buy an RV from the dealership. I have gotten to the point where I say, let me just go do a walkthrough and maybe we can do it online, whatever, you know, uh, video chat or whatever. Let me do a walkthrough first because I know at that dealership, the chances of them buying it are probably going to be slim to none because they get a lot of water damage vehicles. They get a lot of auction vehicles. They get these vehicles that are just so much damage. Um, I see lots of problems with them. I, I have another one that's over in Tampa, and I have another one in Pinellas County um, that I, I I've done 27 inspections and found major issues wrong each time. Um, so it doesn't mean that they're not going to have a good one. But the point is, 
you know, that's that's insane. So I know as as an inspector, when somebody calls and they tell me the two one of these two names, I'm not going to mention them. But when they tell me the name of these dealerships, I know automatically and I just tell them up front, listen, let me just go check it out. Do a walk through and then I'll call you, you know, because chances are I'm going to go there anyways and call you in five minutes saying, listen, this thing's got water damage. It's got this. It's got that. You know, it's electrical problems. You know, the list goes on. So, and with that being said, um, real quick, I did an inspection on a guy who was getting a deal, uh, a major deal on a RV motorhome, um, $420,000. So it originally, he was, got him from 470 down to 420, $420,000. I went to inspect it. With upon pulling up to the RV, I found two life safety issues pulling up. Then they, I explained that to them, and then I found forty thousand dollars damage in fifteen minutes. So that, and this was at a dealership, a a, a very well known dealership nationwide. How can they overlook forty thousand dollars damage to a roof? Because they never got on the roof. They never looked at the roof. Forty thousand dollars damage. I and I'm there fifteen minutes. You know, so four hundred twenty thousand dollars. This guy was getting ready to drop. So, you know, um, so it's it's weird things sometimes. You never know. Brand new RVs. Um, I was inspecting a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar motorhome. And the dealership came to me and got mad and said, listen, if you find anything else wrong with this thing, we're just going to send it back to the manufacturer. I said, I've been here three hours. Go ahead and send it back to the manufacturer because I got another five to go. And this thing should not be here. It needs to be sent back to the manufacturer. It, it's not even built right. $750,000 unit. So with that being, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make another video about you know, the different types of RVs, but just because it's a million dollars or because it's $20,000, what kind of money are you going to save by getting that inspection? So if somebody's giving you an RV, they say, Hey, you could just take it. I'd get it inspected because you might get it to your house, which this has happened. I had a lady purchased an RV or well, she got the RV she called me and then she didn't like my opinion. So she got, I think three other, she got four opinions all together. All four of us said her, told her the same thing. It's totaled. It needs to go to the junkyard. Now she's got to pay to have it taken off of her property. So she was very upset about that. So she thought she was getting something great. Well, she didn't. Had another lady, she didn't get an inspection because it was only $7,500 for the, for the RV. What could go wrong? Well, she paid $7,500 for this RV, and it was a total loss. Total loss. These people, I don't know how they sleep at night, and I, you know, I hope they got what they deserve. But, however, the unit was destroyed. The roof was destroyed. Um, the the slide-out was ready to fall out on it. Um, the... Uh, all electrical was destroyed. All everything. There was nothing usable in this unit. It was it was junkyard bound. She had to take a seventy five hundred dollar loss. Now, if she would have paid a thousand dollars for an inspection, she would have been out just a thousand dollars instead of seventy five hundred dollars. So, a lot of people. I do run into that. People say, "Well, you know, I ain't got that money to spend." Okay, but you're gonna spend five thousand dollars, twenty five thousand dollars. how much money do you have to lose compared to just losing $1,000 on that inspection? And you can't look at an inspection as losing. It's gaining. All you're going to do is gain. Gain like you wouldn't believe. You're going to gain so much knowledge about that RV. That's priceless. That is priceless when it comes to an RV inspection. So just do yourself a favor, get 
that are being inspected by a certified NRBIA certified inspector. Nobody else. So make sure you get that inspector. There's there's 3,500 different you know inspectors in the United States and Canada alone. Almost every major city that in the United States. So make that phone call. You can go on their site. Um, they're not affiliated with me. Um, I did go there. That's where I got my certification. Um, they don't endorse me, so but I will endorse them because they are a great school. So anywhere you live in the United States or Canada, you need your RV inspected. Get a hold of NRBIA. They'll hook you up with an inspector that's going to do a good job. So make sure you get that inspection.